Well, let's talk about the nitration of toluene. So often when we see these EAS type reactions, we look at benzene and benzene has substituents on it. So toluene has an alkyl group on it, it's a methyl group. And the presence of that methyl group causes toluene to react 25 times faster than that of benzene by itself. Now just statistically, when you look at where the nitro group can go, we could put it at the two position, right? we could put it at the three position, or we could put it at the four position. And when you look down below, the major are ortho and para. And meta here is only 3%. So typically, we would not ever include this as being a potential product for, um, for uh, nitration. So the reason why that's the case can be seen when we look a little bit closer at the mechanism. So let's take a look down here below at the ortho attack. So for the ortho attack, remember we're grabbing a hold of that nitrogen. Right? NO2 is on our ring. You have your plus charge at this position. And swing it around and putting your arrows in, plus charge down here. And then coming down here and getting your plus charge over at that uh, bottom kind of shoulder there. Now this resonance structure that's in green is very favorable because we have here, as it was pointed out below, a tertiary carbocation. Right, this is secondary and this is secondary. And that happens when we attack ortho to our methyl group, okay? Well, if we look down here at para, same idea. So here's para, right, moving our electrons around. That gives us another tertiary. So this is favorable. It's the most favorable of the three. And then moving around with our arrows, getting our plus charge at the other kind of bottom shoulder, the side of where that nitro group is. So I want to point out to you guys that both ortho and para end up with positive charges on the alkyl substituted carbon of benzene. And that is a favorable um, situation. So that situation gives us a lower activation energy because it's a more stable intermediate. Now, if we look at meta, it's the last one to take a look at, and I'll circle that one in red since that one does not occur. But when we look at the meta, um, we come around and grab our nitro group, right? Arrow-wise, we're moving our electrons around this way and then that way. But notice that all of our car carbocations here are secondary, secondary, and secondary. So they're not terrible, they're allylic and secondary, but um, we're not having that tertiary allylic resonance that we see for para and for meta. So when you look at the reaction energy profile of this thing, it's that first step, remember, that's endothermic and that's your rate determining step. So here you have your, um, your, your benzene or your toluene essentially here. So when we look at these molecules um, for meta, well, just by benzene by itself, that has the highest activation energy. Right? If we have toluene, which is our um, methyl group here, if we do ortho and para, we get about the same um, energy profile here, same activation energy. And for meta, a little higher activation energy. So that increase in activation energy is what makes that meta less likely. Now, a, a good common question to ask here is, well, if ortho and para have the same activation energy, then why are they formed at different ratios? Right, because we, we, it's, not, it's not 45, 45, or, you know, it's 40, 57 here. So you get a little bit more para than you get ortho. But part of the reason why that's the case is sterics. So with this methyl group hanging out right here, in order for you to make a bond at this position, these guys have to come close to each other. And that's just a little bit tougher to do than being 180 degrees from each other. So because you have a bigger clearance there, you get an a, a easier approach, essentially.